All right. Okay, so um, as uh, okay, so today's uh, lecture we are going to cover on the subtopic of water. Okay, uh, and after that we are going to look at uh, proteins. Okay, uh, so basically, um, my notes again. I'm just going to emphasize that my note is a little bit elaborated. Uh, so if you think uh, you need to jot down any point so you just uh, feel free to jot down okay so here okay so. okay so water properties so basically as you know water molecules they are polar okay so the water molecule is a polar molecule uh, why why is that uh, water molecule are polar because as you know the uh, the water molecule consists of oxygen and also hydrogen atoms okay one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms okay so on the region where you have the oxygen you have partial negative charge okay on the hydrogen region here the two hydrogen region here you have the partial positive charge on each of the hydrogen atom so water molecule there are uh uh Di, dipolar molecule okay dipolar molecule they have two uh two charges partial negative charge partial positive charge okay so um polarity allows water molecule to form hydrogen bonds with each other okay so water molecules that are in liquid state okay um if you have water nearby you so try to shake the water they move okay so uh the interaction between this water molecule they will uh, form and breaks hydrogen bond bonds okay form and breaks form and breaks hydrogen bonds okay so the two ends of water molecules have opposite charges the oxygen region as i mentioned uh, they, uh, the the oxygen has partial negative charge to be exact okay it has two partial negative charge because later we are going to look at at the oxygen region is going to form two hydrogen bonds okay with another two water molecules so imagine uh, if there is uh, um, uh, another water molecule here it's going to to form a hydrogen bond between another water molecule over here so the same goes to here because it has uh, two partial negative charge here okay so it, it will form hydrogen bonds with another water molecule over here and as for the hydrogen region here Okay, it will attract another water molecule over here through the formation of also hydrogen bonds. So, mm, okay, so every time when you are going to draw a hydrogen bond, you always draw a hydrogen bond using dotted line. Okay, using dotted line. If you draw hydrogen bonds using uh, a straight line, so that indicates it is um, it is a covalent bond. So. So saya punya bengkok sikit sebab tak buat kat sini. So just imagine. Okay, so this one, the hydrogen region will attract ox, uh, the the next water molecule and it forms hydrogen re, uh, hi, hydrogen bond with the oxygen region. Okay, the oxygen region of another water molecule. Okay, so this one same goes to this, uh, this, uh, this side. So it forms hydrogen bond with the oxygen region of another water molecules. So if this is in liquid state okay so the 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 hydrogen bonds with between the water molecule will break and reform break and reform if it's in the liquid state okay so um okay so it says here in liquid state hydrogen bonds are formed between the negatively charged oxygen atom and the positively charged hydrogen atom of another water molecule. So, kita nak concentrate kat sini. This is the, the water molecule that we are going to concentrate. So, this is one water molecule. So, one water molecule, you have to remember, it can form four hydrogen bonds with another four water molecules. So, the oxygen region has two partial negative charge. Okay, one and two. Okay, 
So it can form hydrogen bonds. So this is hydrogen bond represented by dotted line. Okay, so the, the, the oxygen region of this, this water molecule, okay, this water molecule, we form hydrogen bond with another water molecule here, for example. Uh, so the formation of hydrogen bond is between the oxygen region and the hydrogen region, okay, of the nearby water molecule, okay. So sama juga kalau yang kat, kita tengok yang ni pula, okay. So uh, the oxygen region of the water molecule will form hydrogen bonds with another water molecule of the hydrogen region of the nearby water molecule over here, okay. So so that is for the oxygen region. For the hydrogen region, it forms hydrogen bond with the oxygen region of another water molecule, okay, to form the, the hydrogen bond. So you have to remember partial partial negative charge, okay, will attract partial positive charge, okay. So at one point, at one time, one molecule of water can form four hydrogen bond, one, two, three, four, with another four water molecule. But is uh, but if in uh, the liquid state, this hydrogen bond will form and uh, break, form and break, form and break. That's why, um, that's why water in liquid state, they can, uh, they can move freely, can. Okay, so, uh, so this one is additional slide that you can take note. Okay, so these hydrogen bonds form and break and reform with great frequency. Okay, so that's why I, I dia boleh berkocak macam tu. Okay, so um, hydrogen bond, hydrogen bonding of water molecules. Okay, so number one, each water molecule can form hydrogen bonds with as many as four uh, neighboring water molecules. So remember that, okay, one water molecule form four hydrogen bonds with another uh, four water molecule. Okay, so hydrogen bond, remember you have to, to draw using dotted line. Never draw with a straight line. Okay, that uh, will represent a covalent bond. So number two, the degree of hydrogen bonding between water molecules are different Okay, for three different forms of water in your Dabraja. So water can exist in three states uh, as uh, gas or vapor, uh, liquid and also ice, a crystal, a crystalline uh, solid. Okay, so uh, gas uh, or vapor, there's a lack of formation of water, sorry, uh, of hydrogen bonds. Okay, so gas, the molecule of water will vary, will, will, they are, they are further apart. Okay, they are further apart uh, in the air, so they, there is likely the formation of hydrogen bond between the water molecule. Okay, so, but as for in liquid state, so they, they form and break and reform hydrogen bond with great frequencies. Okay, as for water in a solid state or ice, they will form a fixed, fixed, eh? okay, so fixed four hydrogen bond with four, uh, four water molecule to form a crystal structure, okay, a crystal st a structure. Number three, hydrogen bonds are formed or broken as water changes from one state to another, okay. So, ingat eh, kalau ice, the, the formation of, of hydrogen bonds with four water, uh, with four other water molecules, it is fixed, kan, fixed. So you think of, uh, we are going to look at this uh, diagram here. So it shows you a uh, water in different state in uh, in uh, as vapor, as liquid, and also as solid ice. Okay. Okay. So it says here as uh, water boils, many hydrogen bonds breaks. Okay. Steam forms containing uh, minuscule water droplets. Water molecules move freely as water, vapor, or gas. So there is unlike uh, Lee, okay, the, uh, for the formation of hydrogen bond between the water molecules because the water molecule are further apart, okay. So, uh, water in liquid state, okay, uh, water molecule continually form, break and reform hydrogen bonds with one another, okay, with one another. So, as you can see, as uh, you can see here, so the, uh, the hydrogen bond between water molecules, they will frequently break and will reform break and reform, okay. Um, and then next, in ice, 
Okay, each water molecule participate in four hydrogen bonds. This one is fixed. Okay, ingat eh, fixed. Fixed, okay. With adjacent uh, uh, water molecules. So, they will form a regular and evenly distant uh, crystalline less uh, lattice structure. So, so imagine this is one water molecule. It forms four hydrogen bond with another four water molecule. Lagi satu kat depan ni lah sebab dia dalam bentuk. You can imagine dia dalam bentuk 3D lah. Okay. So, uh, so they form a crystal structure. Okay. So, the formation of hydrogen bond uh, will be fixed and there is more space. Okay. More space available between the water molecule in the crystalline structure compared to the distance between water molecule in the uh, in the liquid state okay so that's why ice it is less less dense okay compared to water in liquid state less dense why for for the same volume imagine this one this uh, water molecule in the ice state and this one water molecule in the liquid state they have the same volume same volume but uh, for for water that is in the uh, ice state, there is less water molecule compared to uh, water in uh, liquid state. There is more water molecule. Okay, kenapa kalau ice ni le lebih sikit water molecule available? Sebab dia nak kena form crystal structure here. They have to form crystal structure here so that uh, hydrogen bond between uh, between the water molecule are fixed and uh, and due also to the formation of uh, the presence of spaces, okay, spaces here, uh, space between the crystal structure. So there is less water molecule available for the same volume of uh, of a given uh, water in in uh, in in ice state. Okay, so that's why water is less dense compared to compared to uh, liquid state. So that's why ice they can float, okay, due to there is less water molecule available, okay, compared to the same volume of water in liquid state. Okay, so these are the properties of water. Uh, so there are listed here, there are seven, okay, seven properties of water. Number one is uh, water, as you know, it has high specific heat capacity. Okay, so uh, we are going to look at what is high specific heat capacity. Number two, high heat of vaporization. Number three, they function as good solvent. They can dissolve many um, uh, substances, especially substances that are polar. Number four, uh, they have high density. Uh, number five, uh, transparency. Okay, number six, reactivity. Number seven is cohesion. Okay, so number one, first, we are going to look at uh, the first property, which is high specific heat capacity. Okay, so number one, water can absorb or release a large amount of heat with a slight change in its own temperature. Macam contohnya, awak nak panaskan air. Faham? Awak nak panaskan air. For you to heat um, a kettle of water, okay, so it takes you uh, quite a long time to heat to heat the water. Why? Because the, the water needs to absorb a large amount of heat so that this heat can be used um, to break the hydrogen bonds, especially the hydrogen bond at the surface of the water. Okay. So, uh, so it says here water has a high specific heat capacity which is the high amount of heat must be absorbed or lost for one gram of water to change its temperature by one degree Celsius. Or in your notes, okay, it says here, the specific heat of water is one calorie per gram of water per degree Celsius. So in order to change the temperature of water by one degree, it has to absorb a lot, a lot of heat, okay? So this heat is usually, when you are heating water, so uh, the heat is used to break hydrogen bonds, okay? The heat is used to break hydrogen bonds between the water molecule, okay? <clears throat> so, um, so number two, uh, this stabilizes, um, this stabilizes internal temperature of organism. So what is the importance of this uh, property of water, which is the water has high specific heat capacity? So it is to stabilize internal temperature of organism. So therefore, water acts as thermal buffer. Okay, 
thermal buffer and prevent large fluctuation in body temperature. So a constant body temperature enables the enzyme to function optimally and prevent denaturation of biological molecules. Okay, so take for example our body. Okay, so our body, they uh, it has many uh, proteins that have many function. So example of protein that are present in your body are uh, are enzymes. Okay, there are also hormones. Okay, that are made up of uh, proteins. So this protein they in, uh, easily denature. Okay, enzyme for example, enzymes are pro uh, are made up of protein, and they can easily denature. Or if uh, if the temperature falls below certain um, certain temperature, so the enzyme will be inactive. Kalau above the optimal temperature, it can cause the enzyme to to be denature. Okay, so in order to uh, make sure the uh, the body function optimally, the enzyme in the body function optimally, so um, the the body temperature has to be kept constant. Okay, so because the normal body temperature is forty seven degrees Celsius. Normal body, um, sorry, you get the 47, sorry, 37. Ini dah, dah ruah dah ni. Okay, 37 degrees Celsius. Okay. So, 37. So, this is the optimum uh, temperature for enzyme to work optimally. So, your body is full of fluid. Okay. So, this fluid mostly composed of water. Okay, so the water within your body will function as thermal buffer to make sure your body is maintained at 37 degrees to make sure the enzyme within your body function optimally. For example, if you are, if you were to be in a desert, okay, in a desert, obviously, the temperature um, uh, at the desert will be very hot. Okay, but that will not make your um, your body fluid to 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 be the same as the 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 atmospheric temperature. For example, kalau kat luar tu, kat desert tu, let's say for example, 50 degrees. Kan, kat desert, 50 degrees. Will your body fluid uh, change to 50? No, because your body is full of fluid, which is water that function as the buffer, which is to maintain your body temperature at the optimum temperature, which is 30, 37 degrees Celsius. Sama juga kalau pergi kat tempat yang sejuk, sejuk kan, kalau pergi uh, you, uh, you go to area that that is zero degrees Celsius. So will your body uh, temperature drop to zero degrees Celsius? No, because your body is full of fluid, which is water, that will maintain your body temperature at thirty seven degrees Celsius to make sure your uh, your body function optimally, especially the, especially the enzyme within your body. Okay. So another. Uh, significant or importance of this property, okay, number two is that it is to stabilize temperature of ocean and lakes, which is large bodies of water, okay. So, ocean and lakes temperature does not change, um, does not change uh, easily because, because they are large bodies of water, okay. So, why, uh, why is this important? Because this is to make sure um, it uh, to provide a, a thermally stable environment for aquatic organism to live in. For example, the kawasan yang sangat sejuk uh, during winter, for example, during winter um, uh, in Europe, for example, okay, the 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 atmospheric temperature will drop, okay, uh, during winter, for example. So, so imagine this is a lake, a pond, okay, a pond, for example, okay. So, dalam ni ada fish. Okay, ada fish. Dia berenang dengan happy di dalam tu. But, uh, outside is really cold because it is during winter. Okay, so zero degree Celsius for example. Okay, so the top layer will form uh, an uh, ice, ice which function as insulating layer. So, this will, uh, the, the, the water below will keep at a constant temperature to make sure the aquatic organism uh, can survive. Okay, so atas dia akan jadi sejuk tapi the rest of the water body will maintain constant. The temperature will maintain constant. Okay, so and uh, the third one stabilizes temperature of uh, on earth surface. Okay, so these are uh, the importance or significance of 
the first property of water, which is high specific heat capacity. Number two, high heat of vaporization. So first, we are going to look at what is evaporation. Okay, so evaporation is the transformation of a substance from liquid to gas. Another term for evaporation is vaporization. So which is the property of water that we are going to look at, look at here, which is we are going to look at how water in liquid state changes to gas. Okay. And the, uh, and the uh, amount of heat requires. Okay. So heat, heat of uh, vaporization is the quantity Ataupun dalam nota awak dia cakap amount kan? Sama je, quantity or amount is the same. Okay, is the quantity of heat a liquid must absorb. Okay, a liquid must absorb for one gram to be converted into gaseous state. Okay, so this heat as I mentioned before is used to break hydrogen bonds. Okay, to uh, to break as many uh, hydrogen bonds as possible. Okay, so water has high heat of uh, vaporization. This is due to the many hydrogen bonds that must be broken before the water molecule can escape from the liquid. So to become water vapor. So again, so this is imagine you are uh, you are heating. Okay, a pot of water. Okay, so you have to heat the uh, the water for quite a long time so that the heat can spread through. Uh, the water molecule to break the hydrogen bonds. Okay, the hydrogen bond between the water molecule. Uh, so, so as the heat reaches the surface of the water, so uh, the water molecule at the surface will break hydrogen bond from each other to release, to release the water molecule from liquid state to gaseous state. Okay, so this is to break the hydrogen bond between the water molecule. Okay, so as a liquid evaporates, taking heat along with them, okay, so it, uh, its remaining surface cools, which is a process we call it as evaporative cooling. Okay, so evaporative cooling of water helps stabilize temperature in organisms and bodies of water, which is like end ponds. Okay, so, um, similar macam tadi lah juga, lebih kurang. Okay, uh, number, okay, so next, uh, the importance of uh, this uh, property, high heat of vaporization, eh, provide a mechanism that prevents terrestrial organism from overheating. Ter terrestrial organism are organisms that live on land. Kita human, okay, human or any animals or any organism that lives on land, okay. Uh, dogs, cats, horses, whatever lah, animal. So those are animals that live, lives on land, terrestrial animals. Okay, so for example, so uh, evaporation of sweat from the human skin dissipates body heat and prevent overheating. So when you are feeling hot, you will sweat and the sweat evaporates from your skin to remove excess heat from your body. Okay, so as for animal, okay, so uh, they, um, they pant, panting. Okay, panting. So, macam kalau contohnya, um, uh, if you see dogs, okay, cat, dogs ke, cat ke, they will uh, open their mouth and stick out their tongue during, um, when when the, when the temperature are hot. Okay, so this is to allow uh, evaporation of uh, liquid from the body surface to increase the the, the exposure of, uh, of the body surface to to the environment to allow evaporation of liquid from the body okay so this is to cool down their the body temperature so next is transpiration which involve okay evaporation of water from from uh, plants leaves okay so this is to help keep a uh, uh, leaf tissue from becoming too warm uh, in the sunlight okay so plant is an organism okay plant is uh, is uh, is an organism that cannot move okay so when they are exposed to um, extreme temperature okay hot temperature so they will undergo transpiration to remove excess heat okay from the plant okay through evaporation from the surface of the uh, leaf okay so the next uh, property which is a good solvent okay so what is a solvent? Solvent is uh, is the dissolving agent of a solution. Okay, so water, they are known as universal solvent. They can um, um, dissolve most 
solutes okay that uh, that are polar okay that are polar so water is a polar molecule so large polar molecules such as proteins can dissolve in water if they uh, if they have ionic and polar regions tadi ingat eh kalau water molecule kita tengok tadi uh, the molecule is roughly like this okay oxygen and hydrogen so the oxygen region has partial negative charge the hydrogen region has partial positive charge all this region that has partial charges can form hydrogen bond with other polar molecules including proteins including um uh salt even can nacl nacl uh, the 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 sodium has a uh, partial sodium has has positive charge bukan partial charge eh positive charge okay sodium has uh, has positive charge chloride has negative charge okay so so molecules that are polar molecules that are uh, that uh, that have uh, negative or negative or positive charges they can uh, dissolve in water okay so metabolic reaction takes place between substances in solution so kalau macam sini contohnya kan let's say so this is your body cell okay so your body cell they, uh, they have cytoplasm inside the cytoplasm uh, the cytoplasm they are in aqueous state so aqueous state why because uh, they have um, it, your your cell is also full of uh, water okay water so water in cell will will act as a medium for reaction to occur inside 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 the cell okay so so uh, met, it, uh, water can allow metabolic reaction to occur okay the presence of water in aqueous uh, uh, condition allows metabolic reaction to occur Okay, so next, um, as you can see here, uh, it shows you how solute dissolve in water. Okay, solutes that are polar dissolve in water. In this case, you have glucose. Okay, so yang hitam ni, you you can imagine it represent carbon atom. The red atom here is the oxygen. Okay, imagine oxygen. The grey atom, it represents hydrogen, okay? So, obviously, the hydrogen region will have partial, yeah, oxygen, eh? OH, they have partial positive charge, will be attracted to water molecule that have partial negative charge, okay? Oxygen here, hydrogen here, okay? Hydrogen will have partial positive charge oxygen half partial negative charge so they will form hydrogen bond okay so in order for a solute to be able to dissolve in water water molecule has to surround the solute okay through the formation of hydration shell okay hydration shell so mana-mana solute yang boleh larut dalam air adalah disebabkan apa Molekul air tu, dia surround molekul-molekul uh, 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 solute tu. Okay, solute in this case, solute yang kita uh, kita fokus dalam uh, slide ni adalah glucose. Okay, so glucose, they are polar molecule. Glucose is a polar molecule. Okay, so it says here when an ionic or polar compound is dissolved in water, each ion is surrounded by a sphere of water molecule called as hydration shell. So kalau kita tengok, kalau kita nanti kita belajar pasal uh, carbohydrate, okay. So this is the structure of a glucose. Sorry lah tak cantik ya. Okay. Okay. So glucose, they have many hydroxyl. They have many hydroxyl. So this hydroxyl, the presence of many hydroxyl group in the glucose molecule allows the glucose to be polar, okay? To be polar. So due to the polarity of glucose, so glucose can dissolve in water because they can form hydrogen bonds with water molecule, okay? With water molecule. Um, bukan hydroxyl, ni. Okay, sini. 
okay, with water molecule. So water is a versatile solvent due to its polarity, which allows it to form hydrogen bond easily. So this is one example. I add another example for you to uh, uh, better understand on the formation of hydrogen, uh, hydration shell. Okay. So for example, salt. Salt dekat atas permukaan yang uh, letak di atas meja yang tak larut lagi dalam air, dia dalam bentuk solid. Kan? Okay. Uh, simpan garam dalam bekas, dia dalam bentuk solid. Awak nampak garam tu. But once uh, you place the salt inside water, the salt will disappear. In, or in another term, the salt will dissolve in water. Okay. Dissolve in water. Why? As you can see from this diagram, uh, it says here, when uh, when uh, sodium chloride is added to water, the negative, re the negative oxygen region of polar water molecules are attracted to sodium cation. Sodium, it is positively charged. Nampak kat sini? Sodium, it is positively charged. Okay. So, uh, there, there will be formation of hydration shell. Okay. Around the sodium ion, around the cation. Okay. Around the cation. Hmm. Okay. So, water molecule will surround the sodium ion. Okay. So, kalau-kalau nampak kat sini kan dekat dalam di diagram ni, the oxygen region of water molecule will face the sodium ion because the oxygen region has partial negative charge which attract to the positive charge of nitrogen. Eh, sorry, positive charge of sodium ion. Okay. As for the chloride ion, so chloride ion, it is negatively charged, will attract the hydrogen region of the water molecule. Okay. So, water molecule will surround the chloride ion but this time the hydrogen region will will face the chloride ion in the formation of the uh, of the hydration shell so as a result a sphere of water molecule that is hydration shell surround each solute uh, sorry each solute ions okay so this causes the uh, the salt to be dissolved in water due to the formation of hydration shell. Okay, water molecule that surround each ions, each sodium ion and each chloride ions. Okay, so next one. Uh, the next uh, property of water is high density. Okay, high density. So, um, water has a maximum density at 4 degrees Celsius and expand upon freezing. Okay, tadi apa is... Uh, Tadi kita tengok kan yang pasal ais tadi. So expand upon freezing. Why does water expand during um, freezing? Which is um, contohnya kan, if you put a glass of water, get okay, a glass of water inside a freezer, okay, inside the freezer, and after that, if you take out the glass of water, it causes the glass to break. This is because the water molecule will tend to spread, okay, spread further apart from each other uh, during the formation of ice crystal structure, okay, because uh, because um, in the process, uh, it wants to form the hydrogen. Uh, the water molecule wants to form a fixed hydrogen bond, okay, a fixed hydrogen bond with other four water molecule to form the ice crystal structure. Okay, so below four degrees Celsius, water moves slower, less hydrogen bond break. Less energy is available, lah, can less energy is available to break the hydrogen bond because now the temperature drops below four degrees. The, the, there's there's less energy that uh, that that provides or that that will allow the hydrogen bond to break. Okay. So at zero degrees, the water molecule beca become locked okay, into a crystalline lattice. Each water molecule hydrogen bonded okay, to four other water molecules. So in the formation of this uh, phenomena, ni, hydrogen, bo uh, hydrogen bonded to four other water molecule, the water molecule will spread further apart uh, from each other to form the ice crystal lattice. 
okay, to form the ice crystal lattice. So there is more space, okay, there is more space between the water molecule uh, in the ice crystal structure, okay. So hydrogen bonds allow water molecule, water molecules far enough apart to make ice less to make ice less dense, okay? So, which is 10% few wat fewer water molecule for the same volume. So, therefore, when water solidifies or become ice, it expands and becomes less than as, uh, as, uh, as a liquid, okay? So, kalau kita tengok kat um, diagram ni, okay, so, imagine, eh? so, this, uh, the blue, the blue water here, okay, represent water in liquid state. So this one yang yang warna uh, mer, uh, apa putih ni so uh, the uh, the arrangement of water molecule in in uh, in ice state so kalau tengok eh we imagine that vo the volume is the same the same for liquid and also the volume is the same as ice but if you look at the liquid state of water they have more water molecule okay they have more water molecule because the water molecule can freely move from each other okay and uh, there is high frequency for the formation of hydrogen bonds and for the breaking of hydrogen bonds between the water molecule so high frequency of hydrogen bonds to break and reform uh, form and re uh, reform okay so there there will be more water molecule available in the liquid state as compared to water molecule arrangement in the solid state, in the ice state. So in the ice state, there will be less energy, okay? So the water, uh, the water molecule will move lesser, will move uh, slower, okay? To move slower, okay? So the water molecule, water molecule will be uh, further apart from each other, Okay, so that to make sure this one water molecule can form four hydrogen bonds with another four. Here, yeah, like I said, can you imagine the, the three D lah kan? With four another, uh, with with four other water molecule. So this is to make sure the 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 water molecule is in the crystal crystal state, crystalline uh, structure. Okay, so there will be more space between the water molecule. So that's why ice in water in ice states it is less dense okay so that that's why ice can float okay ice can float okay so the floating ice will become as in insulating layer okay insulating layer that um that makes sure, for example, if this is a pond, okay, during winter, so it functions as insulating layer to prevent the water body below from freezing cold. And so this is to make sure aquatic organism can survive, okay, can survive, can live during the winter, for example, okay. <laughs> so uh, another point that, uh, uh, this is my uh, um, additional slide, if you can, if you want to take note. Okay, so if temperature rise above zero degree Celsius, hydrogen bonds are disrupted, ice starts to melt. Okay, so so if you increase the temperature above zero degree Celsius, there will um, there will be uh, slowly additional energy. Okay, so this energy will be used to uh, to break hydrogen bonds, and the ice will start to melt. Okay, from from solid state it starts to become liquid state, okay, liquid state, starts to become, okay, due to the increase in uh, in the temperature, okay. So, the temperature is used to break hydrogen bonds from ice becomes liquid, okay. So, uh, this causes the crystal structure to collapse, okay, and water molecule become closer to one another. So, in liquid water, the molecule are connected by impermanent hydrogen bonds which are constantly breaking and reforming. So, remember, water in liquid state, they always move. They have higher energy. Okay, so the, uh, the hydrogen bonds will keep on 
forming and breaking, forming and breaking. Okay. So water reaches its greatest density at 4 degrees Celsius. Okay. So below 4 degrees, uh, the density of the water will fall. Okay. Will be less dense. Okay. That causes the ice to be able to float. Okay. So ice will float. Okay. So ice float on the surface of water forming an insulating layer. So ponds, lake and oceans do not freeze solid in lower depth. Okay. So uh, ins this is to insulate liquid below so aquatic organisms survive during winter. So imagine, so th this is just to imagine. Imagine if ice sank, all bodies of water would eventually freeze solid making life impossible in aquatic environment. So imagine lah, so this is a point, imagine kalau ice tu were to be heavy, okay? ice were to be heavy. So it will fall okay, to the bottom of the lake. So uh, yang atas tu akan fall lagi. So fall lagi bawah, sampai bawah dia akan freeze solid. So how how does the uh, aquatic animal able to survive? Okay, so they cannot survive. So that's why um, Allah jadikan, okay, ice punya property dia boleh float. Okay, so this is to function as insulating layer. Okay. <laughs> okay, so water is uh, is is a dense liquid so that enable it to support organism up uh, by by up trust it exit. Ini buoyancy lah. Kan? Buoyancy lah. So uh, aquatic organism such as whale, obviously a whale is really heavy. Okay, so how come that this uh, animal that are really heavy able to live in the ocean without sinking because water can support uh, the organism okay they, they, uh, they provide up trust uh, force okay uh, buoyancy lah okay buoyancy so, uh, that enables the organism aquatic organism to be able to swim in the ocean for example okay Ini sama juga, uh, the same explanation, uh, but comparison between water in liquid state and water in uh, solid state or ice. Okay, so the same volume of water in liquid state and the same volume of water in solid state. Okay, so will uh, solid state or ice will have less water molecule. Okay, so therefore ice is less dense. Okay, so because it has to make sure the formation of this crystal structure fix okay fix uh hydrogen bonds are formed between the water molecule one water molecule has to form four hydrogen bonds with another four water molecule so therefore there's formation of large large gaps okay large gaps between the water molecule okay so lots of open space okay between the water molecule here okay so uh, strong stable hydrogen bonds, okay, strong stable hydrogen bonds between water molecule at zero degrees Celsius forming a rigid hexagonal crystal lattice structure. Okay, as for liquid state, loose hydrogen bonds between continu continuously moving water molecule at 10 degrees Celsius. So 10 degrees Celsius, obviously the temperature is higher compared to zero degrees. So uh, the water molecule will have more energy to move around and the energy will be used to uh, to uh, to break and form hydrogen bonds between the water molecule in liquid state okay okay so the next property of water is uh transparency air itu jernih okay jernih transparency so uh the this uh, property of water will allows aquatic plant for example to obtain um, light energy in order for the aquatic plant to uh, carry out photosynthesis. Okay, so plant has to has to uh, carry out photosynthesis. So they, uh, they have to absorb light energy. So through transparency, it allows any, uh, light to penetrate the water and, uh, and absorb by the plant, by the aquatic plant. Okay. So light sources can penetrate through water medium. So essential for photosynthesis in aquatic organism uh, like uh, brown algae or any other phytoplankton. Okay, phytoplankton animals that live uh, in the aquatic environment. Okay, phytoplankton. Okay, the next one is reactivity. 
So water can take part in chemical reactions in the body metabolism. Essential reactant is uh, in hydrolysis reaction and photosynthesis. Kita tengok photosynthesis dulu lah. Orang belajar kan photosynthesis. So photosynthesis, one of the reactant is water. Dia perlukan apa? Dia perlukan carbon dioxide, dia perlukan air, um, air dia perlukan uh, light energy. Okay, light energy, sunlight. Okay, to form glucose. Okay. To form glucose. So this water, okay, will evolve in the reaction. Uh, one of the function of water, okay, yang, yang kita akan tengok nantilah masa chapter photosynthesis is to provide electrons. Okay, so electrons and also hydrogen uh, atoms so that lastly it can produce glucose. The process can produce glucose. Okay, as for hydrolysis, so um, as I said before, okay, so this is your body cell. The nucleus and then inside you have the cytoplasm, it is in the aqueous state. Okay, so in the cytoplasm, you have many, for example, macromolecule. One of the macromolecule present are proteins. In order to produce protein, okay, they have, the protein have to be synthesized from amino acid. Okay, amino acid. Um... So this amino acid are assembled together, okay, are assembled together uh, and the reaction needs, sorry, and the reaction uh, releases water molecule. It releases water molecule. We call it as condensation. But um, as for large, large macromolecules such as polypeptide, okay, poly, polypeptide, polypeptide. So it consists of many amino acids that are linked together, okay? So in order to hydrolyze this, uh, this um, amino, sorry, this polypeptide into separate amino acid, the process involved is hydrolysis, okay? Hydrolysis. Hydro, it means that the reaction requires water. Lysis is to break bond, okay? Break bond, break the bond between the amino acid in the polypeptide chain, okay? So all this reaction, takes place inside your body cells, okay? So, bodies, uh, your body cell is full of fluid and the fluid, the water inside your uh, inside your cell will also take part in the metabolic reaction, okay? Okay, so next uh, is cohesion. Cohesion of water molecules. So, these are the two terms that you have to take note first, okay? Cohesion and addition. Okay, so cohesion is the attraction between a uh, same type of molecule. Okay, as for addition, the attraction between different types of uh, molecule, different subs uh, substances. So as for cohesion, it involves the linking together, linking together of water molecules by hydrogen bonds. Tadi kan, tengok water molecule ni kan. So they are linked together through the formation of, uh, of hydrogen bond. They are attracted to one another. So these are what we call it as cohesion. Okay, cohesion. Okay. So cohesion helps the transport of water against gravity in plant. So as you know, the tissue that is responsible to uh, transport water in plant is uh, xylem. Okay, is xylem. Okay, so xylem allows water to move uh, from roots, okay, roots uh, up uh, up to the trunk and uh, until it reaches to the to the shoot or the leaf of the uh, of the plant. Okay, so uh, as for addition, is it is the attraction between different substances such as, for example, water and plant cell wall. Okay, or water molecules stick to to other polar molecule by hydrogen bonding. So if you look at this diagram here, you have this diagram inside your notes, okay? So it explains to you how water in the soil, okay, move through the xylem, okay, in the in the plant, okay, from roots to the trunk, okay, until it reaches to the branches, okay, of the plant, uh, until it is uh, released, okay, from the plant through uh, transpiration or this one, it involves uh, evaporation lah, can evaporation from the from the surface of the leaf. Okay. Okay. So this is due to this uh, attraction. Okay, cohesion and also addition. So cohesion is between the uh, the formation of hydrogen bond 
that forms between water molecules. So, so that is cohesion. So it holds the water molecule uh, in the uh, in the xylem. It forms a column of water. Okay, a column of water is formed in the xylem, and uh, and the hydrogen bond will keep will keep the water molecule held together. Okay, as it uh, as it moves along the xylem. As for the addition, okay, it makes sure that the water molecule stick to the plant cell wall. Dia tak jatuh ke bawah. Dia tak jatuh ke bawah disebabkan oleh tarikan graviti lah. Okay, so dia akan melekat ke tepi-tepi dinding xylem ni. Okay, ha. so this is, so the process, the process needs both cohesion and addition. Okay, to make sure water from the soil move along the xylem, okay, up the trunk of the tree until uh, it is released through transpiration. Okay, so it says here, wa uh, water transport in plant evaporation from leaves, okay, pull water upward, okay, from root through water conducting cell, which is the xylem. Okay, so. Like any, okay, so cohesion uh, due to hydrogen bonds between water molecules help hold together the column of water within the uh, within the cell. Okay, so addition uh, addition of water molecule to cell to cell wall to the wall of the xylem here okay, by hydrogen bonds help resist the downward pull of gravity. Kalau dia nak bergantung kepada cohesion je tak boleh sebab cohesion uh, akan menyebabkan uh, air tu tertarik ke bawah disebabkan oleh graviti. So untuk mengelakkan tarikan graviti ke bawah tu, so water molecule has to uh, stick. Okay, it has to stick to the plant cell wall through addition. Okay, adhesion. Okay, so the next one, okay, that involves also uh, cohesion ni. Remember, eh, cohesion is the attraction between water molecule through the formation of hydrogen bonds, okay? So another phenomena is surface tension, okay? So surface tension is a measure of how hard it is to break the surface of a liquid. It is also related to cohesion, which is the attraction of water molecule to one another through the formation of hydrogen bonds, okay? So, uh, water therefore has a greater surface tension than most other liquid due to the ability of the water molecule to form hydrogen bonds. So, hydrogen bonds, kita belajar awal-awal hari tu kan, although hydrogen bond is grouped under non-polar covalent bond and it is considered as weak bonds, okay, but if the, uh, if the hydrogen bonds exist in large amount, it forms quite a strong interaction. So therefore, when it forms quite a strong uh, interaction, okay, it uh, it produces these effects, which is surface tension. It can allow, okay, uh, insects such as spiders to uh, to be able to walk, okay, walk uh, on the surface of the water. In this case, as you can see, the spider can walk or move at the surface of the water due to the collective strength of hydrogen bonds at the surface of the water, okay? So water has an unusually high surface tension due to the hydrogen bonding between the water molecule at the air-water interface. Ini permukaan air ni, permukaan air ni kita panggil dia sebagai air-water interface. Um, kalau saya draw kat sini, contohnya, uh, Kolam lah, whatever lah kolam ke bika ke cawan ke orang nak consider dia. So this is the surface of the water. So this is the air. This is water. Okay, so water molecule at the surface of the water Okay, will form hydrogen bonds which, with each other. So yang purple ni lah saya tulis saya. Tak ada ruang untuk saya buat dot dot. Tak, saya buat they are straight line, okay. Um, so the hydrogen bonds are formed between water molecule at the surface and also hydrogen bonds are also formed between water molecule at the first at the surface and also water molecule down below. Okay, so this will create surface tension, okay. Surface tension.
okay surface tension so this allows uh, apa spider to be able to walk on the on the surface of the water tapi kalau awak jalan atas air tak boleh lah okay your your body weight is heavier okay compared to this spider <coughs> okay so that's uh all that is the property of water okay so now it is 11 o'clock kita break dua minit sekejap okay uh, before we continue on macromolecule if you have question um, while other pergi rest nak pergi toilet ke nak pergi minum air ke if you have question you can ask within these two minutes kalau ada yang tak faham So this is the attendance. Please uh, fill up the attendance form. You can fill up now or uh, towards the end of the class. Okay, so no questions? Ada soalan? Not yet. Not yet, okay. So, um, I guess um, we, we just proceed, okay? Okay, so now we are going to look at um, uh, introduction first uh, on macromolecules. Okay. So macromolecules, as you know, there are uh, four categories.
categories which you have the proteins you have the uh, lipids uh, nucleic acids and also carbohydrates okay so four classes of uh, large biological molecules are uh, carbohydrates lipid protein and, and also nucleic acids okay so basically uh, they uh, most they, they consist in many forms okay they can consist of many forms they can be polymers or monomers or molecules that exist in two uh, of monomers such as for example when you uh, when you join together two glucose which is monomers for carbohydrate you forms uh, disaccharides which is uh, example of disaccharide you have maltose okay or uh, when you join together a few uh, glucose together okay uh they form oligosaccharides okay so so oligosaccharide are not as long as polysaccharide for example so this this is uh, the one that i've mentioned here is for carbohydrate okay so it also applies to other macromolecules that have monomers okay which is protein and also nucleic acids carbohydrate protein and nucleic acids they can exist as polymers because because they compose of monomers okay they consist of monomers so these monomers are joined together through the formation of covalent bonds to form the polymers polymers untuk carbohydrate kita panggil dia apa polysaccharides polymers untuk protein kita panggil apa uh, polypeptide polymer untuk nucleic acid kita panggil apa uh, polynucleotides okay so monomers untuk uh, carbohydrate ada banyak contohnya apa glucose okay uh, fructose okay so those are we have uh, also ribose or deoxyribose so those are example of monomers for carbohydrate as for proteins the monomer the monomer for protein that forms the polymer or forms the polypeptide chain we call it as the amino acid okay so amino acids there are 20 different types of amino acids that uh, uh, the two the 20 different types of amino acid are determined by the uh, different types of side chain that are present in the amino acid and as for the nucleic acid uh, the monomer for nucleic acid to form the poly uh, polynucleotide chain uh, is the nucleotides okay so nucleotides that forms dna and also the nucleotides that uh, that form rna is a little bit different okay in the uh, uh in terms of the types of sugar that are present uh in that molecule and also the base that are present and ni kita akan tengok um in detail when we reach uh, to the nucleic acid part okay uh so three of the four classes of macromolecules are polymer carbohydrate protein and also nucleic acids they compose of monomer to form polymers as for lip, uh, lipids okay so they are large molecules okay there are one large molecule such as for example phospholipid molecule phospholipid molecule bukan monomer eh they are not monomers they are molecule that uh, when you put the phospholipid in water okay they will they will assemble the, themselves to form a, a bilayer okay to form a bilayer which is uh, one of the bilayer it can become uh the, the function of the bilayer is to become membrane for example plasma membrane or any membranes okay membrane within the cell such as membrane of organelles or uh, steroids okay so, so steroids uh, is one of the uh, category that falls in the lipid macromolecules kalau lipid ni kita ada steroids kita ada phospholipid we have um, wax and also triglycerides tapi untuk awak punya syllabus wax kita tak tengok kita just tengok untuk steroids phospholipid and also triglycerides okay so remember you have to remember that lipid does not contain does not consist of monomers okay they will not form polymers okay okay so uh yang okay so in this table it shows you the component of the monomers the, the, the different types of monomers that uh that makes up the macromolecule in your cell okay so here we will have the amino acids okay amino acid monomer there are 20 different types of amino acid which depends on the side chain r is a side chain okay side chain 
so there are uh, so there are many side chain that can uh that are that will determine okay the type of amino acids uh, in certain protein okay so the uh, the structure of this amino acid you have to remember okay how to draw this uh, this molecule okay uh, okay so monomers example sorry uh, this is this are example of protein actually okay, example of protein protein which which is the monomer is amino acid so protein the uh, they can exist as enzyme they can exist as defense protein one of example of a defense protein is uh, obviously uh, antibody okay so antibody or um, immunoglobulins okay which function to protect uh, against disease enzyme is to catalyze chemical reaction within the cell uh, storage protein stores amino acid this one is for example albumin okay albumin in eggs okay so they, they function as storage protein okay put it low though and then transport protein uh, transport substances so for example in your plasma membrane you have um uh, carrier protein or channel protein that's uh, transport substances across cell okay across cell membrane and then you have also hormones which is to coordinate orga organism responses hormones okay for hormones there are two types there are hormones that are made up of steroid there are also hormones that are made up of protein in this case in this table we are looking at protein so example of protein sorry example of hormones that is made up of protein easy example is um insulin okay insulin glucagon so those are example of protein sorry those are example of hormones that is made up of protein which is to coordinate organism responses much like insulin it controls your blood glucose level okay um and then next one is receptor protein receive signals from outside cell Receptor proteins ni yang kita, yang ni kita akan tengok in uh, all this function of uh, protein, we are going to look at in detail actually in chapter 3. Okay, yeah, and this one I'll, I'll explain later when we reach chapter 3. Same goes to this one, motor protein function in cell movement. So, ini kita akan tengok in chapter 3. Uh, structural protein provides structural uh, support. So, yang ini, saya uh, sebab ini, uh, you, I, I guess you are not really familiar with this one. I, I'm not sure if you have studied during uh, during form four, form five, but this one we are going to look at this this three, okay, uh, in detail during chapter uh, chapter three, okay. Structural protein during chapter two, okay. Structural protein, motor protein, chapter two. Receptor protein, chapter chapter three, okay. Okay, so next one uh, is the monomer for carbohydrate. Uh, so monosaccharides, okay, is the monomer for for carbohydrate. So um, you have monosaccharides such as, for example, glucose and fructose. And then the next level is disaccharides when you join together two uh, two monosaccharides, so, such as, for example, lactose. You join together glucose and galactose. Okay, sucrose. You join together glucose and fructose. You get sucrose. Okay. Um, Salamantos, uh, glucose and glucose. Okay, so monosaccharides and the disaccharides, the main function is that it function as fuel. Okay, it says here fuel, uh, uh, which provide carbon sources, sources that can be converted to other molecules or combined into polymers. What this means is that, for example, an easy example is glucose. So glucose is the main substance, main fuel okay that uh, that will be used during cellular respiration okay that that takes place in the mitochondria which is uh, to the process of cellular respiration it uses glucose to generate or to produce atp atp molecule so atp molecule is the energy currency uh, of cell once atp molecule uh, is produced okay during cellular respiration using glucose this ATP molecule will provide energy for cell to do cellular work. So ATP allows your cell to be able to move. For example, the, uh, your movement of muscle, muscle cell. Okay, the movement of muscle cell uh, is accomplished 
through the energy provided by ATP, which is produced during cellular respiration, which is the cellular cellular respiration uses uh, uses glucose okay to 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 allow the process to occur to allow cellular respiration to be able to occur to produce atp molecule okay so some uh, lactose lactose can so lactose are sugar in milk okay sugar in in milk so when you drink milk it um dia can menyebabkan awak rasa kenyang Oh, apa tenaga contohnya kan so because the the inside lactose you have glucose so this glucose can be used during cellular respiration to to generate energy okay um and then uh, okay so after the saccharide you have the polysaccharide so polysaccharides uh, there are uh, there are this these are these are complex carbohydrate okay complex carbohydrate cellulose starch glycogen and also uh, chitin okay so cellulose as you know it is the component of plant cell wall so it gives it gives strength okay to plant cell wall starch uh, function as um, um, to store energy okay to uh, energy storage energy storage in plants so contohnya starch where can you find starch in rice so bila makan nasi kenyang provide uh, you energy okay it provides you energy nasi rice bread for example potatoes okay uh, and then uh, glycogen. So the the starch that you eat, okay, will be digested, will be hyd uh, hydrolyzed, okay, into uh, into glucose. And then once the glucose is absorbed in your body, okay, by your digestive system, it gets into your blood. So this glucose that gets into your blood will be uh, uh, converted or, or stored in the form of glycogen, okay, in the form of glycogen so this glycogen will be stored in the liver okay it, it, will, it will be stored in the liver as a um, source of energy okay so when uh, when your body is lacking glucose so the glycogen will be released okay uh, released with the help of the hormone uh, glucagon okay and then uh, it releases the glucose to provide glucose for cellular respiration to generate energy okay so it is starch, starch storage in uh, uh, energy for plant, glycogen storage energy for animal. So the uh, glycogen is stored in the liver. And then chitin, animals and fungi. Okay, chitin um, is the component of uh, exoskeleton for insect, for example, uh, grasshopper. Okay, grasshopper, the exoskeleton is made up of chitin which is combination of um, uh, mon uh, of carbohydrate and also protein okay combination of carbohydrate and also protein this is this is chitin okay component of uh, exoskeleton uh, of insects and also fungal cell wall so next one is for lipids okay so lipids is the macromolecule that is not composed of monomers. Ingat eh, component ni, this is not monomers. Okay, uh, glycerol, fatty acid, um, phospholipid, uh, steroids, they are not monomers. They are a whole molecule of lipid. Okay, so example of lipid, lipid is a group uh, in uh, the, the one that you are going to learn is grouped into three the one that, that we are going to look at, which is uh, triacylglycerol or triglyceride, which is fat and oils. So fat, for example, animal fat. So animal fat is uh, in solid form, okay, at room temperature. Oils is uh, 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 oil from vegetable, fat from, fat from plants, okay, fat from plants that exist as liquid at room temperature, okay. So so this is from animal, this is from plant. So animal, solid at room temperature, plant, liquid at room temperature. So triglycerol, as you can see, it consists of one glycerol molecule that is attached to three fatty acids. Okay, three fatty acids. And uh, the next one is phospholipids. So this is phospholipid molecule. One phospholipid molecule consists of hydrophilic head, okay, why do we call it as um why do we refer the head as hydrophilic because 
the head contain this P. What is P? P is uh, inside the head, is it has the phosphate group. If okay, phosphate group, kita tengok hari tu, dalam functional group kan, dia PO4, 2 negative. Okay, the, by having the negative sign, it causes the head to be charged, negatively charged. Okay, so when the, the head region is charged, it can attract water molecule. It can attract water molecule through the formation of hydrogen bond. Okay, so that's why we call it as the hydrophilic head. Okay, hydrophilic head and this one is hydrophobic tail. The hydrophobic tail consists of two fatty acids. Okay, two fatty acids. Um, so this is the detail for phospholipid cases of glycerol, phosphate group, okay, and P ni, uh, and two fatty acids, okay. So when you get um, a bunch of phospholipid molecule and you throw it inside water or in aqua solution, they will automatically assemble the, uh, themselves into uh, a bilayer, okay, in, into a bilayer. So this form lipid bilayer of membranes, okay. Uh, so uh, the the phospholipid molecule will assemble themselves in this way. For example, the hydrophilic head will face the aqueous solution. Okay? It faces the aqueous solution because it, uh, it attracts water molecule. And as for the hydrophobic tail, okay, there will uh, the region will be isolated from water. Okay, the region will be isolated from water and the hydrophobic tail are attracted to one another. This is what we call it as um, uh, hydrophobic interaction or um, and, it, and it, it also involves Van der Waals interaction, the attraction between the uh, the hydro, hydro, Hydrocarbons, okay, the interaction between hydrocarbons, okay, hydrocarbon, hydrocarbon, hydrocarbon regions of the phospholipid molecule. And then the next one is steroid, okay, so a steroid, as you can see from this diagram, it consists of four fused rings, okay, four fused, uh, four fused rings. Um, so, so uh, you can find steroid embedded in the uh, plasma membrane. So the steroid that are uh, present in the plasma membrane, we call it as the cholesterol. So function of cholesterol col uh, in the plasma membrane, we are going to look at in chapter three. Okay. And then signaling molecule that travels through the body, uh, which is hormones. So as I mentioned before, hormone ni dia ada terbahagi kepada dua jenis bergantung kepada dia punya component. So hormone the hormone that is made up of protein and also there are hormone that is made up of uh, steroids okay so hormones that are made up of steroid for example sex hormones okay uh, testosterone estrogen progesterone so those are uh, hormones that are made up of steroid the precursor molecule used to uh, to make uh, this sex hormone is uh, cholesterol okay so the, then the last one is the monomers for nucleic acid, okay? So nucleic acid, there are two types, which is DNA and also RNA, okay? So the monomer, we call it as nucleotides, okay? So the, the component of a molecule of nucleotide, it consists of three components, okay, which is the phosphate group bonded to a sugar molecule. Sugar molecule is bonded to a nitrogenous, base okay so the two type of nucleic acids you have as uh, i said have, like i've said before which is dna so dna is double stranded molecule that is found in the nucleus okay which is function to store uh, genetic information heredity information okay so the sugar for uh, for nucleotide that are found in dna is deoxyribose and as for rna the sugar we call it as ribose. DNA is double stranded, RNA is single stranded. Okay, so kalau DNA, sugar dia deoxyribose. Kalau RNA, sugar dia ribose. Okay, so that's why kalau DNA, kita panggil dia apa? Deoxyribonucleic acid. That is DNA. Deoxyribonucleic acid. Okay, kenapa acid? Sebab apa? Acid ni dia uh, disebabkan oleh kehadiran uh, phosphate group ni. 
kan uh, uh, kena tengok balik yang fosfit ni. Fosfit ni formula dia PO4 PO4 2 negatif. Okey, 2 negatif disebabkan structure fosfit tu initially dia ada OH. So uh, if uh, uh, if the molecule is inside the aqueous surrounding obviously it is inside aqueous surrounding it is in your cell okay so the phosphate group will release the the hydrogen ion okay by releasing hydrogen ion it is considered as acid okay uh, deoxyribonucleic acid okay <coughs> so the basis uh, there are four types which is uh, cytosine guanine adenine thymine there are four for DNA. Okay, so they are usually double-stranded. For RNA, okay, ribonucleic acid. R, ribonucleic acid. Okay, so the, the basis uh, is, the same, is the same except for thymine is replaced by uh, uracil. Okay, cytosine, guanine, adenine and uracil. So they are usually single-stranded. So uh, the function of, uh, of RNA is uh, is it involved in gene expression. So gene expression istilah ni or just uh, tengok je lah istilah tu kita akan explain detail masa uh, chapter genetic semester 2. Okay. So including carrying instruction from DNA to ribosome. Okay. So the detail process uh, of this um, statement we are going to look at uh, in detail. Okay. During semester 2 but kita akan tengok at, at apa at, at the surface uh, bila kita reach nucleic acid ni. Okay. <coughs> so the synthesis and uh, breakdown of polymers. Okay. Synthesis apa hasilkan kan? Hasilkan macam mana daripada monomer uh, glukos, 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 glukos jadi um, starch contohnya. Daripada glukos uh, to synthesize glycogen for example. Daripada amino acid to form uh, polypeptide daripada nucleic acid sorry daripada nucleotide uh, to form nucle uh, nucleic acid which is either DNA or RNA. So how do you attach together the monomers to form the polymers? It is through the reaction we call it as condensation. Okay. Condensation or dehydration. So daripada istilah ni awak tengok eh. Dehydration it means that the process involve the move uh, the removal. The removal or the loss of water molecule. Okay, dehydration or condensation. Tersejat kan. Eh? Proses tu menyebabkan uh, terhasilnya air. Okay. So for example here, okay, you have a short polymer. So monomer 1, monomer 2, monomer 3 is already linked. Okay, uh, inside this short polymer through the formation of covalent bond. So the bond between the monomers uh, in the polymer is covalent bond. Okay. So you have these three uh, monomers in a short polymer. So you want to add another monomer. Okay. So uh, the uh, in the process of condensation or dehydration, OH of this uh, monomer will be removed and hydrogen of the uh, one of the monomer, the, 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 the monomer at the end of the polymer will remove hydrogen. So these two will be removed and combined to form water molecule. Okay, so this is, uh, uh, these two will be removed, water will be, uh, will be discarded from the reaction to form a longer polymer. So this time from three it has four monomers in that uh, molecule. Okay, so reaction yang kena ingat lah, di, kita akan tengok example for, uh, of this reaction for, uh, for the formation uh, of maltose for example, okay when you when you combine together uh, glucose and glucose to form maltose so when you form uh, when you combine together glucose and glucose to form maltose the reaction will produce or will uh, release water molecule okay uh, kalau sama juga kalau if you want to form uh, if you want to attach together to amino acids okay attach together to form dipeptide for example so the reaction will involve dehydration reaction and releases water molecule. Okay. So ingat eh, setiap kali awak, awak join together monomers okay, to form uh, polymer for example. 
So the the reaction releases water molecule in the uh, dehydration reaction. The opposite reaction is hydrolysis. Okay, hydrolysis. The opposite reaction. Hydro. It requires water molecule. Okay, lysis. It involves re breaking bond. Okay, breaking bond. Okay. So a process where polymers are disassembled to monomers. So the reverse reaction of the uh, of dehydration reaction. So here you have uh, the polymer. Okay, the polymer. So you want to release the fourth monomer here. Okay, the fourth mon monomer from the poly from the from the polymer. So in order to break this bond, okay, water molecule is required. A water molecule is required where. Uh, the water molecule will add OH to the monomer and hydrogen to the monom uh, to the uh, to the last monomer of the polymer here. Okay, so bonds between the monomers are broken by addition of water molecule. That's why the process we call it as hydrolysis, breaking bond using water molecule. Okay. Okay. So next, okay, the first tadi lah tadi kita tengok just the process of synthesizing and breaking of polymers. Okay, ingat eh, to synthesize is through condensation, breakdown is through hydrolysis. Okay, so next we are going to look at protein. Okay, so protein consists of one or more polypeptides. Okay, consists of one or more polypeptides. Eh? Uh, kita pause sekejap sekejap. Sorry. Okay, so proteins. So protein can consist of one or more polypeptides. So polypeptides are polymer of protein, lah, polymer of uh, amino acids that are linked together. So the monomer for proteins uh, uh, are the amino acids. Okay, kenapa dia dalam bentuk plural kat situ? Because there are 20 different amino acids. Uh, based on the side chain present in the amino acid molecule. Okay. So each feature of each amino acid, it has the alpha carbon. Okay. Okay, the alpha carbon, the amino group. Okay. Uh, amino group uh, contribute to the basic property of the amino acid and the carboxylic group. Which is contri uh, the the presence of carboxylic acid contribute to the acidic property of amino acid. So amino acid ni dia unique. It, it has both acid and uh, base uh, group. Okay, carboxyl and amino group. Okay, so it has uh, here uh, a fixed hydrogen bond here. It's in it, and also side chain R. Okay, so side chain. Ataupun awak boleh panggil ni sebagai R group okay, Ataupun variable group Sama, dia benda yang sama Side chain, R group or variable group Okay So this group will determine the type of amino acid Okay There are 20 different type of amino acid available So each amino acid has different side chain or R group So kalau kat sini You have to know how to draw an amino acid molecule You have to know, kena ingat Hmm, cara nak lukis amino acid okay. Tadi apa? You have to know eh kat sini Saya bagi contoh carbon Ini R group okay. Dia alpha carbon tadi kan So alpha carbon is bonded to R group Is bonded to uh, hydrogen atom Okay Dekat sebelah sini dia ada amino Group amino ada dua hidrogen, okay? Amino ada dua hidrogen. Um, ini ada carboxy group, okay? OH, okay. So this is amino acid one, okay? So saya nak draw two amino acid here. So amino acid two. Ini 
Ini saya tunjuk terus lah. The formation of a dipeptide. Okay. Formation of dipeptide. Okay, dipeptide. Dipeptide is when you join two amino acid, two amino acid together. Okay. So, you draw, the, this is the second amino acid. Hydrogen, side chain, carboxy group, H can, uh, nitrogen, and hydrogen there. So this is the amino. Okay. So dia punya product is a dipeptide. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Okay, in the formation of dipeptide, saya nak ambil warna purple tadi, lupa. Okay, ni amino acid dua, ni amino acid yang pertama. Okay, so in the formation of a dipeptide, okay, it involves what reaction? Dehydration or condensation. Okay, which is it involves the removal of water molecule. So in the process of removing a water molecule, as you, uh, as you can see from the drawing that I've drawn here, so the first amino acid will lose the hydroxyl group. The second amino acid will lose a hydrogen atom from the amino group. So this one will combine together to discard a water molecule. Okay. So so ini dah remove kan? OH dengan H. So in the uh, so now you have to combine together amino acid 1 and amino acid 2 to form to form the dipeptide. Okay. So, combine je lah together. So, carb, draw balik. Carbon. Ini soalan ni selalu buat exam. Dia suruh to, uh, lukis reaction uh, of combining two monomers together kan. So, you have to know how to draw the reaction. Okay. Uh, yang ini awak dah remove kan? So, tak, boleh, tak payah nak draw lah dah. You just combine. Combine with kalau yang, okay, the bond, the covalent bond linking together the the two monomers, saya draw dengan line hijau lah. Okay. So this is the covalent bond formed between amino acid 1 and amino acid 2. Yang warna hijau ni, the covalent bond. Okay, so dia akan, uh, dia akan form covalent bond with nitrogen. And so atas ni ada Hydrogen, carbon, side chain, R, side chain R tadi, okay. Hydrogen, carboxy group, okay. So this is the dipeptide that is formed through the process of condensation that re releases water molecule. And the bond formed between these two amino acids in uh, for the formation of the dipeptide, we call it as peptide bond. Get eh? Peptide bond is the bond formed between amino acid in a polypeptide chain. Maksudnya, ini baru dua monomer kan? Dua amino acid. If you were to join more amino acid to form a, a, a longer polypeptide chain, okay, so all this bond between the monomers, between the amino acid, they are still peptide bond. Peptide bond is the bond linking amino acid together in a polypeptide chain, okay, of protein. Okay. So, if you are linking two amino acid together, you remove one water molecule. If you were to link three amino acid together, you, re you will remove two water molecules. Like that. If you were to link five amino acid together, you will remove four water molecule. Ha, macam tu. So just tengok je lah uh, soalan tu macam mana nanti. Okay. Kalau oh, buat latihan, kita jumpa soalan yang suruh buat reaction macam ni. Okay. Okay. So uh, the R group. Okay. So the R group of amino acid can vary in structure. Okay. Shape, charge. So they can have positive charge, they can have negative charge, they can be neutral. Okay, 
So uh, for the for the side chain that has charges, positive or negative, they have uh, the attraction toward water molecule. Okay, they are hydrophilic. Okay, they hydrophilic. Okay, they are hydrophilic. So they will attract to water molecule for for amino acid that has charged side chain. Okay. Ada positive charge ke, negative charge ke, uh, they are acidic or basic ke. Kalau acidic, any one, this one is acidic, acidic amino acid. Acidic amino acid, this one is basic. Okay, basic amino acid. Okay, so acidic or basic amino acid that has charge side chain. Okay, so they are attracted to water molecule and they are hydrophilic. Okay, they are attracted to water molecule. And the reactivity uh, with other uh, water molecule, they can uh, they can react with other molecules also. Okay, so there are twenty different water uh, amino acids, which occur naturally in proteins of organisms. Okay, in animal, in plant, so uh, you have these twenty amino uh, amino acids. Okay, so amino acids differ in the in their property due to the differing side chain called the R group. So property of the protein, okay, property of the protein, the function of the protein will be determined based on the type of amino acid present, which is determined by the, the R group, okay. So uh, the physical and chemical properties of the side chain determines the unique characteristics of a particular amino acid thus affecting its functional role in a polypeptide. So, apa yang menentukan fungsi sesuatu protein tu? Macam mana enzim tu boleh uh, berfungsi? Macam mana hormon tu boleh berfungsi? Macam mana collagen dalam skin awak tu uh, bawa underneath your skin will, will not dissolve in your body fluid? Okay? Sebab your body is consists of uh, is consists of uh, fluid kan? So, under your skin you have collagen. So how to make sure this collagen will not dissolve in your body fluid due to the property of the side chain. Okay, due to the side chain that are present in the protein that contributes to the physical and chemical properties of uh, of that protein itself. Okay. So uh, amino acids are grouped into four different groups, which is uh, the it can be polar. Non -po sorry, non-polar, polar, acidic or basic. Acidic um, amino acid, they are the uh, COO negative, carboxyl group. Okay, kalau basic, they are the amino, amino group. Amino group, okay, amino group. Kalau polar, side chain dia ada OH contohnya. Ada SH contohnya. Kalau non-polar, dia ada, dia ada methyl contohnya. Okay, ha. so kita akan tengok satu-satu. Okay, so for non-polar amino acids, okay, so these are examples of non-polar amino acids. You, you look at here, you have the glycine, alanine, valine, leucine, isoleucine, methionine, phenylalanine, tryptophan, and proline. You don't have to remember the name, okay, tak perlu. You don't have to remember, you have to, you don't have to memorize how to draw each individual molecule. Yang awak kena tahu adalah bila awak tengok soalan tu, awak boleh cam, oh ini adalah non-polar amino acid. Dengan cara macam mana, awak tengok dia punya side chain. Side chain uh, of non-polar amino acid, it consists of hydrocarbons. Okay, it consists of hydrocarbon. Carbon dengan hydrogen je. Carbon dengan hydrogen. Majority of it, majority of at atoms in that side chain is composed of carbon and hydrogen. Okay, apa? Carbon and hydrogen all the way. Carbon and hydrogen. Okay, carbon. Ni carbon. Uh, Carbon kan? So ni carbon, hydrogen. Ni walaupun ada sulfur tapi tak sebanyak carbon dengan hydrogen yang present. Okay. So uh, because uh, the the side chain is consists of hydrocarbons so it causes the amino acid to be hydrophobic. Okay. So it causes the protein or the amino acid to be insoluble in water and non-reactive. The stable. Dia dalam keadaan stable. Stable lah kan? Stable maksudnya dia tak 
dia tak perlu uh, obey the optic rule dia dah dia dia dah obey optic optic rule lah maksudnya dia tak, tak, tak payah nak cari extra elektron ke whatever okay so dia dah stable non reactive okay so it is insoluble in water it does not attract water molecule so usually form a structural protein such as collagen so collagen are made up of amino acids uh, that are non polar okay so this make sure the collagen underneath your skin will not dissolve in your body fluid okay so next is polar amino acid okay so polar amino acid um this one you have the serine threonine cysteine tyrosine asparagine and also glutamine so kalau awak tengok kat sini the different the different ada apa ada polar functional group ada OH ada sulfhydrin Okay, ada OH ni hydroxyl lah kan, sulfhydrin, ada karbonil, ada amino, karbonil, ada amino, ada uh, hydroxyl. So all these uh, functional group that are present in the side chain causes the amino acid to be polar. So when they are polar, they are hydrophilic. So means that it can attract water molecule. So when they are attracted to water molecule, they are soluble in water. Okay, increases the solubility of the protein. So, protein that is made up of polar amino acid, they are soluble. Contohnya apa? Enzyme. Okay, enzyme or uh, hemoglobin, okay, uh, or hormones, okay. So, they are, they are uh, proteins, okay, that uh, the monomer uh, consists of polar amino acid. So, that uh, it causes the protein to be able to, to, to be uh, to be soluble okay contohnya kalau kalau um, hormones they travel in your body fluid okay they travel in your blood so in uh, in order to make sure this hormone travel easily in your blood they have to dissolve in your blood okay so that's why uh, apa, this this uh, protein are made up of amino acids that are polar okay so and also enables hydrogen bonding between polypeptide chains. Ini kita akan tengok ni. Um, the attraction of between such chain uh, during the formation of the tertiary structure, a tertiary level of protein. Protein awak tahu kan dia ada primary structure, secondary structure and tertiary structure and quaternary structure. Okay. So kalau primary, just straight chain of amino acid. Okay. Kalau uh, secondary dalam bentuk helical, okay. Kalau uh, uh, tertiary level daripada helical ni, straight chain ni dia akan fold into specific shape due to the interaction between the side chain, okay. The interaction which is it involve, for example, the formation of hydrogen bond between the side chain. Ini kita akan tengok masa kita reach uh, uh, quaternary level nanti, okay. Bukan quaternary, tertiary level. Tertiary yang ketiga eh, tertiary level, okay. Okay, so uh, tadi apa? Polar, non-polar, polar. Okay, now is electrically charged amino acid. So electrically charged amino acid, kita ada negatively charged, which is acidic. Kita ada positively charged, which is basic. So if you look at the side chain uh, for the acidic amino acid, they will have carboxyl group. Such as for example aspartic acid, nama pun acid. So dia ada carboxylic acid here. Okay. Glutamic acid. So side chain dia ada uh, carboxyl group here. Okay. Uh, at the side, at the side chain. So they are negatively charged kat sini. Okay. The, the, the COOH kan. So if uh, in the aqueous solution, so the COOH will be ionized to become COO negative. Okay. So for basic, you have lysine, arginine and histidine. Oh, tengok the punya side chain ada apa? Amino group. Okay. Amino group. Okay, so base, uh, they have positive charge. Okay, they have positive charge. They are positively charged. Okay. So kalau untuk uh, acidic amino acid that are negatively charged, so they have uh, negative charge at the side chain due to the presence of carboxy group, uh, usually uh, ionized in the aqueous solution, obviously lah, in, uh, in the aqueous uh, environment of your, of, of body cells and they are strongly hydrophilic. 
hydrophilic means that it is attracted to water molecule. Okay, sama juga yang ni. Okay, they, they are hydrophilic. They have negative charge. They can ionize in water. Releasing apa? Hydrogen ion into the surrounding. Releasing hydrogen ion into the surrounding. As for basic amino acid, they are positively charged. Okay. Uh, the R group contains additional amino group. Kan, apart from yang fix ni, kan. So, they have additional amino acid. So, by having positive charge, again, this amino acid are hydrophilic. Okay. Okay. So, istilah yang seterusnya adalah amphoteric. Okay. So, amphoteric molecules. So, amphoteric ni awak kena ingat eh. What is amphoteric? Ini saya bagi dia punya definition dulu so that you understand. So, in chemistry, an amphoteric species, okay, is a molecule or ions that can act or react as both acid and base. Okay, so amphoteric molecule can either donate a proton or accept a proton. So, this is amphoteric properties. Kita tengok balik structure amino acid tadi. Uh, alpha carbon, side chain, hydrogen atom, C, double bond O, OH kan? Amino group H. Yang ni mesti laju je boleh lukis nanti eh. Mesti laju. Saya saya remind eh. Okay. Dia boleh bertindak sebagai asid dengan cara apa? Dia releasekan hydrogen ion jadi COO negatif. Okay. So hydrogen ion is, uh, is uh, released to the surrounding. So, amino acid is acidic. At the same time, okay, it, it also can function as a base. Uh, dengan uh, kat sini, dekat aqua solution, there are the excess hydrogen ion, for example. So, the amino group can accept another hydrogen, another hydrogen ion. So, by accepting a, a, a proton, so the, the amino become positively charged. Charge. Okay, so donate a proton daripada carboxy group here. Okay, accept a proton daripada amino group here. Okay, ha. so itulah that is amphoteric properties. So uh, amino acid is special that the both amino group and carboxy group. So they can be both acidic and base at the same time. That is amphoteric. Ini awak kena highlight kan ni. Can be both acid and base. So, so dah explain lah ni yang tadi sama je. So, an amino acids are amphoteric have both basic and acidic group. So, in uh, in water, okay, ataupun in, in aqueous environment, its amino group which is NH2 which is base is ionized to become NH3 yang macam saya draw tadi kan. So, it become NH3 plus. Okay, NH3 plus because it accept a proton, a hydrogen ion. So, the acidic carboxylic group COOH is ionized to form COO negative by donating a proton by releasing hydrogen ion. So dia, uh, the amino acid become dipolar ion. They are the both positive and negative charge. Okay, positive and negative charge here. Okay. So molecules, molecule, uh, molecules with amphoteric properties can function as buffer uh, which is resist any change in pH and try to maintain the pH. So mean, it means that okay dalam bad, contohnya dalam badan awak kan the normal pH for your body is 7.4. Okay 7.4 cannot be uh, more than 7.4 or drop below 7.4. Okay so for example if at one time you your your body fluid has excess of hydrogen ion. Dalam keadaan apa? Uh, keadaan Uh, body fluid awak ni dalam keadaan excess of hydrogen ion bila contohnya you eat too much meat ataupun uh, you produce more carbon dioxide okay more carbon dioxide so in your blood you have many uh, proteins that function as pH buffer contohnya ada apa ada tadi antibody tadi kan ada antibody ada hmm, hemoglobin okay So all this will function as a pH buffer that will make sure your body fluid is maintained at 7.4. Okay, so hemoglobin are made up of protein. Okay, hemoglobin are made up of 
protein. So this will make sure that your body pH is maintained at 7.4 when your body produces too much carbonic acid due to too much production of carbon dioxide. Okay, your 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 body produces. Contohlah. Okay. <coughs> okay. So tadi amphoteric eh, ingat eh. Dia boleh berfungsi sebagai acid and base. Another term that you have to remember is this one. Zwitter ion. Okay, zwitter ion. Um, what is zwitter ion? Dia, it, it is a molecule that has both. Okay, positive and negative charge at the same time. Okay, it's a molecule with a positive and negative electrical charge at different location within, within that molecule. Hello? Tadi kan? So this is the standard uh, uncharged amino acid. So when the amino acid is uh, in uh, aqueous solution, okay, so the amino group will be, uh, will be accepting hydrogen ion, okay. The carboxyl group is releasing hydrogen ion, okay. So they can, uh, they can, the, the amino acid will be ionized. So the amino group will become NH3. The carboxyl group will become COO negative. So that is zwitter ion, a molecule having both positive and negative charge. Tadi kalau amphoteric, uh, a molecule that has both acid and basic property. Okay. So sama lah, sama je. The, the same thing, dia melibatkan amino acid yang melibatkan dua functional group ni. Amino and carboxyl. Okay. So amino acid dissolve in water to form zwitter ion which is bipolar. Bipolar, dia ada dua-dua. Positive charge, negative charge. Okay, in aqueous solution. So when an amino acid is in the form of zwitter ion, its amino group, okay, is ionized into NH3. NH3 plus. Jangan lupa ya, plus sign ni, plus sign ni superscript eh. Acidic, uh, acidic carboxyl group will also be ionized by releasing a proton. It becomes COO negative. Negative is superscript dekat O eh. Bukan superscript dekat C, salah eh. Superscript dekat O. Okay. Okay, so all these amino acids contain a basic amine group, okay, which can act as proton acceptor. Ingat eh, amino group dia bertindak sebagai proton acceptor, dia terima hydrogen ion. Bila dia terima hydrogen ion, it becomes positively charged. As uh, as for the uh, carboxyl group, acidic carboxylic group, so it becomes a proton donor. They release hydrogen ion. So if it's melibatkan molecule amino acid yang sama, maksudnya uh, carboxyl release hydrogen ion, ambil balik by amino group. Okay. Uh, so that is within kalau dia melibatkan molecule dalam molecule yang sama itulah. So the, uh, the carboxyl group, uh, the carboxyl group donates a proton to the amino group forming a zwitter ion in an internal acid base reaction. So dia, kalau dia melibatkan diri dia sendiri lah dalam reaction tu. Okay. So ini sama je. Uh, ini saya tak nak explain uh, lebih. Okay. So benda yang sama yang ni. Okay. So saya, um, it is now 12 o'clock. Saya nak sambung sikit lagi boleh tak? Uh, do you have any class at 12? Saya tengok tak ada kan dalam jadual. Uh, so saya nak sambung sikit pasal um, yang saya tunjuk tadi sama je. Okay, uh, how how a polymer, how polypeptide chain are produced. Okay. So amino acids are linked by peptide bonds, okay, which is a covalent bond. So the, the bond between amino acids within a polypeptide chain, they are linked together through the formation of peptide bonds, okay, which is a covalent, which is a type of covalent bond. So a polypeptide chain is a polymer of amino acid linked by peptide bonds as an amino end, we call it as the end terminus. And hujung lagi satu is a carboxyl end. We call it as the C terminus. Okay. So each polypeptide has a unique linear sequence of amino acid. What, a, what does it mean by unique? Contoh je. You have enzyme 1. You have enzyme 2. You have hormone 1. You have hormone 2. All these different type of protein molecule will have different sequence of amino acid. That, that is what it meant by unique. So this different 
different sequence of amino acid will determine the function, the structure and the function of the uh, of the protein molecule. Yang saya ni ni adalah peptide bond lah yang saya yang saya draw ni kan. Apa jenis ni? So peptide bond. Okay. So tadi kita ada 20 different types of amino acids kan. So dia dia boleh lah turutan dia apa-apa. Glutamin, uh, alanine, whatever lah. Whatever sequence of amino acids in that uh, in that uh, in that protein. So the the different type of amino acid will determine the structure and function of the protein. Okay. That is what you meant by unique. And then okay. So polymerization process, okay, is a successive condensation of amino acids to form polypeptide chain, okay. So you have many amino acids, you want to join together this amino acid to form polymer, polypeptide chain. So the process is condensation. So kalau nak join lima amino acid, dia akan release berapa uh, air? Empat, contohnya. Kalau if you want to join 100 uh, amino acid, you form 99 water molecule during condensation reaction. Okay. So uh, ini saya dah draw tadi lah sama je. Benda yang sama. Okay. So ini dia dah bagi dipeptide. Okay. So this ini dipeptide. You want to add another amino acid. So this is the side chain eh. Side chain, the side chain. So in the formation of a polypeptide where you add one monomer to the polymer. Okay. To the existing polymer. So the reaction will involve hydrogen to be removed from amino group, hydroxy removed from the carboxy group to form water molecule. If in the question it asks you to draw the reaction, you must clearly draw there's formation of water molecule. So this can contribute to you gaining a mark. Okay. And then after you have removed the water molecule, you join together the monomer to the polymer and you have to label the peptide bond. So this one could, could also contribute to another, to another mark. Okay. The product, another mark. Okay. So soalan yang macam melibatkan you drawing the reaction could involve uh, three marks altogether. Okay. Uh, macam tu. So you must know how to draw the reaction. You must know how to join the the monomer together or kalau vice versa, vice versa kan, uh, is the process that involve hydrolysis. Can you add water back to the to the reaction uh, to to separate okay the monomer from the polymer okay. So kalau kat sini dia cakap last uh, last point ni the polypeptide has a repetitive backbone. So this is a repetitive backbone eh. Uh, to which the amino acid chain are attached. Repetitive backbone maksudnya uh, here you have the amino, sorry, the N-terminus. The N-terminus hujung, hujung pangkal ni kita ada N-terminus uh, which is the amino N. Hujung ni kita ada carboxyl N which is the C-terminus.
Oh saya terkeluar sorry maksudnya Google Meet pun dah tak tahan dah dengan saya saya, saya cakap Okay saya nak habiskan sampai protein sebenarnya tapi tak sempat tapi tak um, Saya nak go through yang pasal uh, yang yang level ni je protein protein level ni saja. Four levels of protein structure okay Saya habiskan sini je alright Okay, so primary structure, unique linear sequence of amino acid. Secondary structure, uh, coiled or folded. Okay, tertiary structure is formed due to the interaction, okay, among various side chains. Quaternary structure, protein consists of multiple polypeptide chains. So kalau tengok kat sini, so primary structure. So this one, it consists of amino acids that are linked together uh, through peptide bonds. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, so thank you. Okay. Okay, so primary structure. Boleh nampak ya sekarang? Okay, so primary structure for uh, so you need um, linear sequence of amino acids joined together by peptide bond. So, so every amino every protein, okay, you have many different proteins. You have enzyme. You have many different enzyme. You have many different uh, hormones. Okay, so um, the sequence of amino acid between this protein molecule are different. Okay, are different. The sequence are different, but the different sequence of amino acid will determine the structure and function of the protein. Okay. Kalau secondary structure from linear, they can fold uh, into two types, either alpha helix like this or beta pleated sheet like this. Okay. From the secondary structure, okay, so ini satu, um, uh, satu polypeptide chain ni, kau kena faham kan? So from this one polypeptide chain that is in the secondary structure, they will fall into specific shape. Okay, they will fall into specific shape that is tertiary structure. So kenapa dia boleh fall into specific shape? Because due to the interaction between the side chain. Okay, so after qu uh, quaternary structure is the, qu uh, so after the tertiary structure is the quaternary structure. Quaternary structure combination between uh, polypeptide chain in the tertiary structure ataupun in the secondary structure kan protein polypeptide in the second, uh, secondary structure several polypeptide chain of the uh, of, uh, of polypeptide in the tertiary structure also they combine together to form a functional quaternary structure contohnya uh, hemoglobin okay so hemoglobin four polypeptide chain in the tertiary structure combine together to form a functional hemoglobin molecule. Okay, so itu adalah these are the four levels of uh, protein. Okay, four levels of protein yang okay, ini awak boleh baca lah nanti. Okay. Hmm, sebenarnya sikit lagi je nak habiskan protein function. Kita stop dulu lah. Okay, kita stop dulu nanti kita sambung. Okay. So far ada soalan? 